Hello there everybody, my name is Nestor Rolfus so and welcome to the first part in our Let's Play Pandora First Contact. For those of you who don't know, Pandora First Contact is a Vorg strategy game that takes a lot of its inspirations from other Vorg games, such as Warlock 1, Warlock 2, Civilization 5, Alpha Centauri, uh, those sort of uh, games, so to speak. Not exactly Master of Orion level of strategic depth, but as much as uh, Civilization 5. So I did play a Let's Play of Pandora First Contact before I actually started this, but I've made a lot of errors and I don't want to repeat those, so let's just start off fresh. Anyway, so I'm going to go through the different factions. We have Divine Ascension. These guys are really good at attacking, they have good morale, but they suck at scientific research. These guys over here, the Imperium, have really good militaristic units, you know, see this 100% healing rate, so essentially you're kind of like Wolverine, you can regen all of your injuries and they have really good military power. However, however, you do have to pay a little bit more for your troops, which kind of sucks. We have the Noxium Corporation, which give out more money in general, uh, in terms of taxes, prices, starting credits. However, they, they kind of suck at keeping all of their citizens in the cities. Then we have the Solar Dynasty, who are very production focused and very, very fertile. They also come with a free worker, but they give out more pollution. Pollution, like in Civilization 4, is really, really bad for your cities. It kills off your citizens, causes morale spikes, so to speak, and morale spikes will cause rebellions, and all around it's just bad stuff. We have the Terra Salum, which are kind of like the hipsters, or the hippies in this game, so to speak. You know, they're very friendly, they don't like to attack the other aliens. By the way, there are aliens that inhabit the planet that you're starting off on. So, they're kind of like barbarians in the sense that they will attack your cities and try to destroy you. But they, they won't attack them. However, they're very peaceful and nature-loving, so bleh, we won't pick them. Then we have the Togra University, which excel at scientific research. But they, they suck at morale overall. However, they come with a free scout unit, so that's good. We're going to be playing as the Imperium, I think, because... I do like the Imperium sort of overall militaristic flair. And besides, conquering your opponents is way better in a game than not conquering your opponents, in my honest opinion. Peace is for the weak. Anyway, we're going to play on continents, and we're going to put this on a medium difficulty. The AI is fairly challenging, not as bad as probably brutal StarCraft 2 level AI, but pretty bad. We're going to keep the aliens on medium. as. Aliens will tend to spawn around the planet, and you really don't want very high aliens. The, uh, these guys will come at you non-stop all the time, like a zombie apocalypse. And then we have your standard sort of flare. Now, these are the, the um, advanced menu settings. I think we're going to leave all the victories on. We have economic, military research. World temperature is okay. Medium alien aggression, like I said beforehand, is good. We can reveal two tech trees ahead of when we are at, we can actually research them we can go all the way up to three and then we can all go all the way up to four i think we're just gonna keep at two just because you know standard and stuff like that anyway let's start this baby up it is the year 2107 a.d and mankind has reached out to the stars after decades of exploration discovering nothing but dead rock our quest for a second Earth has finally come to an end. A terrestrial planet in the Nashira system has become the symbol for humanity's hopes and dreams of a new paradise. The most powerful factions, distinct in their ideologies and beliefs, have sent expeditionary forces to stake their claim to this new world.
You are James Hyde of the Militaristic Imperium. Your speciality is warfare, with expertise in all of its facets, and your Imperial legions are feared across the solar system. Your society follows a strict military code, with members learning discipline and the chain of command from early on in childhood. When on duty, any Imperial soldier is expected to excel, but the Imperium rewards that with a very high rate of pay. All right, so that's the Imperium faction for you. Now, that was the intro sequence of Pandora First Contact. And as cool as that was, I am a little bit disappointed in the fact that not every faction has their own unique intro sequence. I guess you can't really deviate too much with the different factions, so to speak, though. I mean, what are you going to do? Give the hippies their own little tree uh, ship, and then you have the Imperium have, like, a giant gun as a, as a ship. It, it's, not, it's just not going to work, I guess. Essentially, I mean, they're all at the end of the day ships, and they're all trying to get to the planet the same way. The problem I do have with this game as well is the fact that it does only take place on one planet, not multiple planets, from what I can tell thus far. Um, but that's probably because uh, that's the early game phases of Pandora First Contact. Maybe later on as the game progresses, you can travel across different planets, but I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's only one at the start. Anyway, so there's a little bit of uh, backstory over here. We're not going to read too much of it because, quite frankly, it's just a standard we're on the mill chi sort of affair with sci-fi mumbo-jumbo all over the place. So right now, here's our spawn. We spawn right next to a natural plantation. Gives us four food. And as you see right now, this this game is much like Civilization V. You know, we have pollution rankings. We have mineral rankings, food rankings. Mineral rankings give us more production. Food rankings give us more food production, that sort of stuff, so that we can go a little bit bigger. What the hell? The music's a little bit loud. Hold on. Yeah, that, that's, that's a little bit better. That is a little bit better. Sorry about that. I'm not, I'm not sure what that whole thing was about. Alright. Seems pretty good. Yeah, audio's pretty good. Alright, so let's see what we have available to us. We have the Colonial Trooper. He's a little bit of a weak guy, you know type of stuff but he'll get the job done right I'll just scout out a little bit and let's see what's around us we have fungus fungus mountains mountains yeah, I guess in general this is the best spot we can pick it's not really much in unique resources I'm trying to see if maybe we can move like our colonizer to another tile like you would in civilization 5 just so that you can get a more favorable spawn you can maybe try it um, I wish I actually went on this mountain instead of this one. A little bit impulsive, to say the least. Because I don't know what that thing is over there. Look at that, it's like golden, right? Yeah, look at this. Oh, let me let me check that out. Damn it, I wasn't able to see. Oh well, we'll see you next turn. Yeah, gold veins. Hmm. Maybe I want to spawn on top of this fungus over here. Get all the production, get all the food that I can, and as well as get the gold vein. It's going to give us pollution early on, but at the same time, I feel it's worth it. Okay. It's good. We are losing health because we're on the fungus. That is A-OK. -okay. Let's go ahead and... Oh, damn, we can't colonize because we're on this terrain over here. Hmm... So we're gonna have to move back. There's fungus all over the place. Alright, so let's just go back all the way here. That was a little bit unfortunate. I actually forgot you can't spawn on fungus. It's a little bit sucky. Alright, so let's build our this city. city is what it is, because our citizens are what they are. Alright, that's okay. And as you as I said beforehand, aliens will come out and try to attack you. These guys are the little uh, sits uh, sites, so to speak. And uh, over here below, it does show you our chances of victory, as well as how many casualties we're going to take, as well as how many casualties they will take. They try to attack us. We're going to eliminate them, but they're going to take out a few guys in the process because Lance guns are apparently really sucky. We do have a couple bonuses, though, because we're on mountains and we have guns and we're Imperium, but for the most part, let's just chill out. And now we can go to our city and let's see. We have one guy who's a scientist. Let's go have a farmer. Well, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Let's grow out our city a little bit. It's going to halt our scientific production, but I think in general, this is going to be really good. Also, our science production is already bad because 
you know, we did the whole moving thing. Let's see what we can do. I guess in general what I want is to increase our mining capabilities. We have fuel training early on, which is really good. Right now I don't really want to use fuel training just yet. This gives us two plus rank for units in a territory. There's no point in using it right now. I guess in general what we can do is just get out a former, which is essentially just a worker, so that we can improve these styles. And we could move out right now if we wanted to. Now let's go ahead and move out our troops. There's an observatory right over there. That would be really good for us to capture because that will give us more science. Alright, let's see if we can squash these guys. Yeah, there we go. Smash them for the Imperium. And we'll we'll heal up our troops. We have 100% heal, so that means in one turn we should be fully healed up. Actually, I'm guessing we only get 100% heal in our own territory, so let's pull back. So far, so good. Our population should grow to two in maybe a few turns or so. Depending on if everything goes well. Yep, two more turns. And let's heal up. Okay, dokie, good. I'm gonna get a miner probably on probably on the mountains over here. Yeah, that's a, that's a good spot for the miner to choose. I want to try and get over here to the gold vein. So let's just prioritize this area over here, this coast, so that we can try to get the food, and then afterwards we can go for the gold vein. Because that would be really good for us to get. One more turn until this guy's fully healed. There we go. <laughs> we get more minerals now, so that means the mountains are going to yield us a lot more production. Which is amazing. As soon as we're done building the refinery, refining array, however. So let's just get out the former I mean the former and then afterwards we can get out the refining array that will help us out producing a lot of stuff now let's continue scouting we can choose a research now and I guess at this point we should probably get analytical dynamics so that we can scout out the area right now we are being slowed down by the forest but that should be a okay because soon we won't need to worry about the forest. Clearly, we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe about us, the less taste we shall have for the destruction of our race. Wonder and humility are wholesome emotions, and they do not exist side by side with a lust for destruction. Okie dokie, so now we have a... A lot of the area actually scouted out, and we have a sunken rune right over here. However, big baddie coming at us. It's really bad. Don't kill us, big baddie. Please don't. No, 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 no. We could rush out a military unit, and I think we might have to in a second or two. Let's hope that he doesn't come back. Yep, he's he's run away like a little bitch. But let's pull back our guys so that we don't get brothel stomped anymore. Let's see. I guess we can have someone go on. Uh, we can, we can keep this guy on. Probably just production duty. In fact, we don't have two guys on production duty. And we don't really need any minerals right now. We can just like rush out this colonial trooper really fast and then afterwards the refining array and then afterwards the reformer. So miners just essentially just gather up minerals for us to use for these um these buildings and techs and units essentially while workers actually produce the things. It's a very important distinction to make. I almost made the mistake of not actually getting in workers. Alright, so I'm about to get out the next trooper. Let's just scout the area, see where that flying monster is. He looks like a giant. What the hell? Look at his mouth. Look at that thing. It's like a zipper. Zip that up. You're indecently showing yourself. Do we have enough minerals? We're losing four per turn. Eh. Let's get one guy on mineral production. 
That's pretty good. Now we're we're at ten. In fact, if that's the case, then let's waste two turns on not getting uh, on essentially just wasting our minerals away on resources essentially. And then afterwards, we can go ahead and go. I guess not positive, but not negative either. Just neutral uh, minerals. Anyway, this guy built. We can continue scouting. We have flowers over here, which give us more production. That's good. We have a ruin here. So let's go ahead and run to that ruin while we'll have this guy just, I guess, guard. Because I don't want that flying zipper monster to come back. Ah! We get discovered. That's good. This guy will allow us to scout out. By the way, you can also upgrade your units and change them up, make them look a little bit different. Like, we could change this guy to... Super Soaker. Yeah, we're gonna change him to the Super Soaker. Go, Super Soaker, go. And over here, we, you, as you can see, I can now build the Super Soaker. Oh yeah. Okay, the former out. Let's go ahead and build some structures on some of these territories over here. And I could get a mine or I could get a farm. But obviously the best thing to do would be to get a farm right now. Just to improve our food production here. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll take us four turns. And I guess at this point what we can try to do is... Mostly get out better units. So let's get out Hellfire. Ooh, and right next to the ruins. I didn't actually see this. Is the Xenomorph drones and the xenomorph queen so these are kind of like the barbs in civilization 5 there would be essentially a nest where all of the aliens will come out of and then there will be one unit guarding that nest while the other units that come out of the nest will just spawn out to try and destroy the human players which is kind of a little bit sucky but that's kind of how it works and these guys are for the most part pretty deadly yeah 100 percent Estimated casualties, zero victory chance. We need better units, so let's pull back. Oh, I can't pull back. That sucks. I'm gonna have to just, I guess, wait. Hope to God that they don't try to kill us. For the most part, however, let's try to ch take out our worker over here. Make him into a miner. So now we're neutral on minerals, but it should be okay. Because we won't be for long. Okay, we were able to leave. An area without getting our asses kicked. That's good. Really good. And I guess for now we can have a scientist on research. Because our research has been lacking. And we can just have like a... I guess... Three farmers. Five min uh, miners. One worker. One scientist. You know, the whole shebang. One, 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 one. Well, actually, not three farmers or five mi miners. But one mi farmer, one miner. One worker, one scientist. Out of five potential miners or three potential farmers. It'd be kind of stupid to actually focus heavily on either of these sort of um, jobs right now actually for our citizens because we need the minerals to actually produce stuff we need the research because we're a little bit behind on research we need the farms to actually get out more citizens that type of stuff oh crap this guy again the devourer okay, let's hope he doesn't get close to this guy over here yep he did not good job so now you can heal up you're all done. Good job. Good job. Good fracking job. Go over here and get a, yourself a mine. Ah, good. Really good. Now we've discovered the weapon Hellfire. This will allow us to essentially destroy these alien units. However, against mechanical and airborne units, it, it kind of sucks dick. So it's not going to help us against the Devourer, but it will help us out in general against those Xenomorph drones. Fact, let me see if I can try to get out the workshop. Yeah, let me get out the workshop and then we can change the gun to Hellfire. Right now, you don't have the Hellfire, right? No, you just have the Lance Gun. Okay. We can refit him, though. This will cost some money, but I think all around it would maybe be worth it. But then again, we have the Devourer here, so maybe not entirely. So in general, where's our, where's our second warrior actually yeah our second colonial trooper we're gonna refit this guy actually first let's heal him up 
Research wise, let's see now. I think at this point, anything that helps us out in our tech tree is probably the best thing for us. We could get colonial ship dismantling. This will allow us to get some free resources and stuff. See no all it. See on sorry about that. My tongue is a little bit of a keyboard sometimes. Xenology. 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 Okay. The study of aliens, both alive and dead. There's more knowledge on them. I guess this would be better. Yeah. And then colonial ship dismantling. Oh god, that's a scary force. And these guys can actually crush us. So we're at the mercy of these flying dudes. Let me see if there's any text that can allow us to kill airborne units faster. Maybe guided weapons? Yeah, we might have to get guided weapons pretty soon. Okay, these will definitely be able to kick airborne ass. However, they can't really destroy these bio um, flying units because they're biological. So something needs to be done there. Oh, you're close, Grasshopper. You are close. We're gonna have to do something about you. Just guard the position. Hold it down. Hold it down, my friends. Hold it down. Okay, good. He has attacked us. And Slim has grown. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. We have a lot more minerals coming in, and... We have two farmers now. That's good. It's really good. shame that right now we don't really have a lot of food production currently we have one guy on the pollution which is a little bit weird the pollution is stopping us from potentially getting out more population which kind of sucks just a shame that right now our military power is essentially useless at this point because we have nothing against these flying units we could just get out a bunch of units, though. Uh, a bunch of really cheap units. Hmm. Okay, I guess for now we can refit this guy. Get him a... A little bit of a flamethrower. And pull this guy out. It seems pretty good. Let's get out... Another colonial trooper. We're making a ton of gold though, so that's good. We're gonna need more population in order to try and claim this coast tile so that we can claim the gold vein. So once the gold vein is given to us, oh, things are gonna be amazing. Just amazing. Okay, so so far so good with the former. Let's pull the former back and we can probably go ahead and hit this farm over here. We're going to wait for another unit to come by, and then afterwards we're going to push out and try to destroy this Xenomorph nest. Let's go ahead and guard. Hmm, minus 25% alien aggression. Alright, so they won't attack us as much as they could, which is good. That's a good thing. I guess for now I just want to, like, get more farms, actually. Just so that I can speed up the acquisition of that tile. You know what? I'm going to end this part off here. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.